Hey everybody! Um, so today was the General Assembly's first full day of meetings and sessions and full is definitely a good word to describe it because today was packed uh, from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. when we broke for dinner but everything was super interesting so it was okay. Uh, we started the day with morning prayer at the chapel at the hotel where some of us are staying uh, called Domus Maria and that was very nice. Um, then, right after that, we met in the auditorium at Domus Marie for the official opening by Caritas's president, Cardinal Oscar Rodriguez, who invited us all to renew our commitment to making the world a better place. Um, they also showed a video message from Pope Francis, who called Caritas the engine of the church that organizes love. Uh, they also read a letter from Ban Ki-moon, who sent us a letter to wish us well in our General Assembly. Uh, and they showed another video that the president of the World Bank had sent for the same reason. So everybody seems to love Caritas, which is nice to see. Um, rather than go through exactly what everyone said here, I've posted pictures of all of the speakers on Twitter along with some memorable snippets of their speeches. Uh, but if you do want to know more, comment, tweet, you know the drill. Um, so after the opening, we had our first plenary session, which was called A Poor Church for the Poor, and that was all about the place of poverty in the church's mission and the church's mission to serve the poor. Um, there were three speakers. The first was the famous theologian Gustavo Gutierrez, uh, and he was really interesting to listen to. Uh, he talked about the importance of sharing, uh, and he pointed out that poverty isn't a lot or a destiny. Uh, it's a man-made human creation, and because of that, we can and we must change it. Uh, next was a South African professor named Beverly Haddad, and then a nurse from American Samoa named Sumita Smith. So again, you can look at my Twitter to see some memorable quotes from their speeches. Next, I attended the working lunch that I had signed up for earlier in the week, and apart from being delicious, it was also super interesting, and that was called Working Together with UN Organizations. So there were a bunch of representatives from UN organizations there who spoke to us about their partnerships with Caritas. Again, they all only had good things to say about the Caritas network. And actually, the representative from UN OCHA, which is the United Nations humanitarian branch, said that the two best things about Caritas, in his opinion, are its ability to advocate for causes and spread, uh, spread the word about issues all around the world, and also its ability to be on the ground at all times especially in places where other international organizations can't reach. Uh, because remember, uh, Caritas organizations often work through their churches, and the churches are already members of their communities. But it was actually kind of interesting because in the Q&A session after the UN people all gave their spiels, uh, a lot of Caritas people actually challenged them on the difficulties that they've faced in working with UN organizations, like, for example, the UN not being accessible because they're talking to governments instead of the actual people, um, also cases of people feeling pressured to take part in activities that don't match their values or face not getting any funding or support from the UN. Um, of course, the UN had an answer for everything, um, but I'm not going to get too political, so I'll just move on. But it was interesting. Uh, after lunch, we had a second plenary session called Growing Inequalities, a challenge for the one human family. And I didn't mention this before, but I should have. Uh, but the name and the theme of the assembly is actually One Human Family Caring for Creation. Uh, in this section, we had Professor Jeffrey Sachs, who gave us some startling facts about climate change and money. Um, he pointed out that the COP 2015 in Paris this year is pretty much the last chance that we have to get our governments to stop man-made climate change before we reach that two degree mark, which is, you know, the fact that if the world warms up by just two more degrees, there's going to be irreparable and completely devastating damage on the environment. And we are on a fast track to make that happen right now, so we do have to act now. It's very important. Um, Next, we heard Father Cedric Prakash from India, who spoke pretty passionately about acting in solidarity with one another. And then we actually had two youths uh, describe the situations of inequalities in their own country. So we had Evelyn from Greece and Leon from Brazil, and those were both pretty interesting as well. After that, uh, there was a statutory session to elect people into Caritas Internationalist positions, but the youth actually skipped those to have a meeting on our own. Um, 
And this is actually the first time that youth have been given a place in Caritas's General Assembly, which is really cool. And a lot of people stop us, or at least me anyways, and say things like, you know, oh, it's so nice to see young people here this year, and you guys are the future of the organization, you know, so that's kind of fun. Um, so there were eight of us at the meeting, ranging from Canada, of course, to Mauritius, Jordan, Lesotho, Greece, Brazil, Honduras, and Kenya. And we spoke about what the youth contribution to the final message of the assembly should be. And the final message is pretty much just a document setting out the plan for the next four years. And it was interesting because we brainstormed this by going around the room and saying three words that we wanted to see in the final message. And that we wanted to see for the youth within the Caritas Networks and especially for our own. So I was actually in the most unique position out of everyone since everyone else came from countries where there's lots of poverty and inequality problems and governance problems. So while they were all throwing around words like empowerment and participation, um, the three words that I came up with were solidarity, responsibility, and awareness, referencing, of course, the ideal relationship that Canadian youth should have with their fellow youth around the world. Um, you know, Canada has its problems for sure, you can't deny that, but for the most part, kids in Canada have pretty easy access to um, pretty much anything they want. So the key for youth in the global north, I think, is getting them to pay attention to all the injustice that's happening in the world around them so that they can grow up and help to make a world where this injustice doesn't exist and where they don't want it to exist. So the youth are going to meet a couple more times over the course of the week on our own, so I'll update you on what we talk about as that happens, and I'm definitely excited for more of those meetings. Uh, we close the day then with a mass in the chapel in Spanish, so I did not have it under control this time. And it was celebrated by Cardinal Rodriguez, again, Caritas' president, so that was lovely. And then we all went for dinner and probably all went to bed because it was a long day and tomorrow is just as full, so we need our rest. So again, check my Twitter for updates on the speakers and what they said, and I will have another full day of meetings to report on tomorrow. So I'll see you then. Ciao.